when they say it's recording, we'll get going. All right, thanks, Wendy, and a good Thursday afternoon to everyone. I'm uh, Tony Bergantino, Director of the Wyoming State Climate Office and the Water Resources Data System, and I'd like to welcome you to our February Conditions and Outlooks webinar. Uh, this briefing today is presented by my office, the University of Wyoming Extension and USDA Northern Plains Climate Hub. The Colorado Basin River Forecast Center is with us, and also the National Weather Service Office in Riverton. So today we'll look at the current drought, climate conditions, some water supply, flood outlook, go into some uh, forecasts and outlooks, and then we'll follow up with some information on snow data that can be found in the, the Water and Climate Explorer and how to, how to go about accessing that. So jumping into current conditions and the current U.S. Drought Monitor map, this was released this morning and it's valid as of uh, Tuesday the 13th. A lot of degradation in the north there outlined in red. Uh, those two gray areas in Park and Campbell counties are areas that they stayed the same compared to the last webinar, but they, the way it was all outlined in red there, it kind of just grabbed everything. So I just outlined those areas to show what stayed at the same condition. All the other areas inside that red either saw drought categories introduced or current drought levels uh, degraded. Uh, well, in all bleak, though, uh, you can see three green areas in the south where we did pick up enough moisture to improve some conditions. And so we just hope that we, we see more of that moisture to improve conditions even more. If we compare where the drought map is today versus last year, we can see that the east, uh, at least from about northeast western county south, is in better shape than it was last year. Uh, the northern parts, except for the areas of the Bighorn Basin, are worse now uh, than last year, as is the west. Uh, currently, our worst areas are far northwest park and then down in the Medbows, both in D2 or severe drought. Uh, last year, our worst area was that red or D3 or uh, extreme drought that was in uh, far southeast in Goshen and uh, northeastern Laramie counties. Uh, looking at the timelines here, so here's the updated one showing the progression of drought in Wyoming since uh, 2000 when the drought monitor started. Currently, just over 56% of the state is in abnormally dry or worse conditions. That's at D0 through D4. Uh, the D0 is not technically drought. It's just uh, the, the heads up condition that we're either going into or coming out of a drought in that area. 21.73% uh, of the state is in actual drought. That's those D1 through D4 categories. And you can see the far right part of the chart, how the areas of intensity are increasing. And very plain from this chart that there's the, the two conditions in Wyoming. You're either in drought or you're preparing for the next one. So here's the zoom in from January of 2020 to, to current day. And this shows that uh, increase over here uh, that's going on currently a lot more clearly. Uh, we're now with just over 2% of Wyoming in D2 or severe drought, and now less than half of the state, 43.77% uh, to be precise, is free of any D category at all. And we update these timelines weekly. At, uh, you can get them at the URL down there on the lower left of the screen, and we also include uh, county-level depictions as well as the state. Looking at 14-day total precipitation, uh, basically since the start of February, uh, nice to see uh, quite a bit of those purples and blue colors on the map with a, a good chunk of Southwest and uh, Fremont County at or above the 98th percentile. Uh, some of that in parts of the Southeast as well, surrounded uh, by large areas between the, the 60th and 90th percentiles, those greens and going into blues. Uh, unfortunately, the Northeast, uh, the Northern Bighorns, uh, a few other areas have missed out on uh, much of what has fallen, and, and those are below the median. We'll look here, 90 days, going back three months. Uh, this is a pretty good cover in the Southwest and up into Fremont still. Uh, hot Springs and even Park Counties uh, along with the Southeast. Uh, worst picture in the North, uh, going all across there. Uh, most of the big horns, northern stretches being under the 10th percentile for precipitation over those uh, last 90 days. Uh, at three months, Natrona and Carbon County show up mostly in the 20th to 30th percentiles with some better, some worse areas in that area. We'll look at uh, two, two depictions of the years. Uh, this is the water year on the left. That's from October 1st through, uh, goes from October 1st through September 30th. 
And then on the right is since is the calendar year since January 1. Uh, for the water year, the Northeast stands out as dry as does uh, most of the carbon, Albany counties, along with the, the Northern Laramie Range. The higher elevations of the Bighorns are also below average. And then uh, much of Western Wyoming, including Sublette, Teton, Lincoln, Western Park County is also under the average. Uh, for the calendar year, we see similar situation, although the Northeast and Bighorns are more extreme than in the water year depiction. Uh, well, uh, Carbon and Albany County areas in the, uh, they're a bit improved in the calendar year. Look, uh, Trona County is a bit lower. Look at the uh, standard precipitation index or the SPI. Uh, upper two maps, uh, upper uh, the 30 day up here on the left and the 60 day on the right. I continue to show those dry conditions in the north that we were seeing on the, the precipitation maps directly. Uh, especially the bighorns, but emerging and uh, intensifying levels in the northeast. At the bottom right, we have the depiction for the last year, last 365 days, and that looks a lot better with mostly normal to wet conditions, except for a few minor areas. Uh, the worst of those is in the far south central part of the state. Going over to temperature, uh, average minimum temperature over the last two weeks, and while the Last webinar had these maps showing real bitter cold that we saw there towards the middle part of January. This time on the lower left, we see, well, the other end of the gauge with uh, much of the Northeast, the Bighorn Basin, and much of Sublette County being more than uh, 12 degrees above normal for, for the minimum temperatures. In terms of the absolute temperature, the thermometer temperature on the upper right, uh, some areas approaching 32 for minimums in the Northwest. While the West saw minimums mostly under 15 degrees or so, uh, it was coolest in the West, except for the uh, Bighorns, Albany County, uh, Sierra Madres, uh, Snowy Range. Uh, also, those, those high elevation areas saw cooler temperatures. For maximum over the last two weeks, up here on the upper right, uh, the actual temperatures again, and highs mostly above freezing, except for those those higher elevation areas again, which get down into the uh, upper 20s usually. Uh, northeast and eastern plains were warmest with highs in the 50s, while the west was coolest with highs around freezing to a bit above, uh, except for up again in the mountains. Uh, for differences from average, uh, departure from normal, so to speak, down here on the lower left, the highest departures were in the northeast and the Bighorn Basin. Uh, again, mostly about 10 degrees above average. And that dropped off as you went southwest with uh, Uinta County being slightly below average, actually, for, for the highs over the last two weeks, down in that uh, zero to three degrees uh, below normal, actually. Go over here to soil moisture, uh, gaining some ground in the last two weeks with uh, several areas making some good improvements. Unfortunately, there were exceptions to that rule, and we uh, we did lose a bit in the northwest as well as the as the northeast. But again, this time of year, not too critical on the on the soil moisture since a lot of the ground is frozen. Uh, looking at snowpack by basin uh, shows us not nearly as well off as last year at this time. Uh, on the of the left there is where we were on this date in uh, 2023, and obviously on the left there is today's. Uh, excluding the South Platte in Wyoming, the Powder River Basin is still our lowest basin at 60 percent, while the uh, the lower green is highest at 103, with the Bear coming in a close second at uh, 102. And these two, again, show the uh, remotely sent snow water equivalent across the state today and compare that to one year ago. Uh, just like last month in the previous year, we still had a lot of that uh, heavy low elevation snowpack that lingered on in the southwest and central parts of the state for quite a while. Uh, this year, a lot less snow showing in those areas, although you can spot a few regions that are that are better this year, such as uh, far southeast and then far southern Campbell County, for example. But, those areas are pretty pretty few and far between. Okay, I mentioned the lower green in the powder as being our, our high and low basins. Again, obviously, except for that South Platte, which is based on one snow tell. Uh, on the left, we have the, uh, the snowpack trace showing uh, the snowpack for the powder throughout the year uh, compared to last year in light gray, the max and the min and the median. 
And while almost coming up to the median line in the last few days, the, the red circled area, you can see it's starting to, to diverge again. Uh, on the right here is the green, the lower green, and circled in green appropriately. You can see where it uh, broke above the median and then is bouncing off it from the upper side. Um, these charts are linked to from the Earl down here on the on the lower left, and I'll also show you in a few slides down the road uh, how to get to them through the uh, the Water and Climate Explorer. And that page that I mentioned, the Earl too, this is what comes up on that. Uh, it's a quick glance at each of the basins in the state, all 19 of them, and where they stand compared to the various percentiles. The red numbers show uh, percentiles that a basin is currently less than, and the blue show the ones where the, the basin is currently above that. So you can kind of get a, a visual, visual view along with the actual numbers uh, for each of the basin. And there's there's way too many of them in red on the map. Uh, we still have the powder below its minimum, uh, as I showed on the earlier slide. Uh, we also have 10 other basins that are under the 10th percentile and only three that are actually above the 30th percentile. And uh, again, this table is updated daily and it's uh, at that basin status uh, page that's on the lower on the lower left earl there. I'll jump over to uh, the teacup diagram since that snowpack is what helps fill these reservoirs. Uh, so where do we stand compared to last year? Uh, all reservoirs today are at uh, or within a percent or two of where they were last year or above what they were last year uh, on this date. So by quite a bit there in Jackson, Palisades, uh, Circle in Green, uh, and even the major downstream reservoirs at uh, Lake Powell and Mead are up. Uh, Lake Powell is up 11% uh, com uh, compared to last year, and uh, Mead is 8% uh, higher than it was on this date in, uh, in 2023. Uh, so while the, the snowpack is low, uh, we still do have some time to grow it, but that will depend on what Mother Nature decides to throw at us. So uh, to tell us a little bit about what's in store, I will turn it over to Jerry Swanson with the National Weather Service office in Riverton, and she'll go over outlooks. Jerry? Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. Go ahead, slide. Uh, so here's the um, the our, our map of the typical hazards, and you can see February, mid-February to mid-March, primary um, hazards this time of year is the winter storm uh, and the high winds um, and also the ice jam issues. That's when we get those warmer days mixed in and the ice decides to break up and, and jam in a, and get a little flooding into those, uh, into those rivers along the way. Um, and you can see just we're almost entering into that first block of fire weather, um, just that little feather there, not quite yet. Um, but that's the same thing as the snow starts to melt off and the winds are, the high winds are there, that's when we start seeing fire weather. Uh, but we're not quite into the fire weather season yet, mainly winter storms and high winds with ice jam possibilities. Slide. Go ahead. Here's the um, seven day uh, precipitation forecast uh, through the 22nd. Um, you can see a lot of uh, a lot of snow expected over the mountains to the west. Um, basically, we're just having multiple rounds, multiple fronts coming through the area, uh, dumping snow over and over again um, with the mountains, especially the higher elevations, seeing um, uh, feet of snow, not just inches of snow. Um, it's nice to see uh, Bighorn, uh, the Bighorn Mountains getting a little bit more snow because they're definitely on the low side uh, for snow this year. Um, so it's nice to see the little bit higher numbers there. And then just across most of the state, I mean, we're seeing at least possibility up to a quarter inch um, of precipitation uh, over the next seven days. Next slide. Uh, so here's the um, temperature outlooks. Uh, there on the left, you can see the temperature outlook, uh, mostly leaning uh, to just above normal temperatures. There's that little tiny sliver in the east of, uh, uh, at the 50% mark. Uh, for above, but mainly just leaning to above normal temperatures. Uh, precipitation on the right, uh, same thing, leaning mostly toward uh, slightly above normal precipitation, except that one sliver of the gray there um, in the far northeast and east part of the state. 
Um, and you can see, I mean, if you look back to the Pacific Northwest, that nice green blob, and that's what we're seeing, all that moisture coming off the ocean is trying to push its way in through the next eight to 14 days. <clears throat> so we'll see some of that moisture, at least a little bit above normal. Slide. Here's the one month outlook and you can see same thing, temperatures leaning to just above normal, except for the Southwest part. Um, that's basically climatology there will be the best forecast. So just leaning to above normal temperatures, uh, but not too high a percentage on that. Precipitation wise, it's nice to see the green, even though it is just leaning uh, toward above normal. The Southeast corner is showing um, a little bit higher um, possibility for the above normal precipitation. So that's that's good to see when we're so low on our snowpack. It's nice to see the green uh, green on here, even if it is just leaning toward um, higher precip. Slide. And there we go. All right, thanks, Jerry. And Paul Miller with the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center, if I get that right, is up next to talk about water supply and uh, flood potential, Paul. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm filling in for Kevin uh, for this uh, round. Um, but just a quick couple of slides here. Um, as far as water supply outlook goes, um, this is really driven by snowmelt driven runoff. So um, most areas over Wyoming are below normal at this time. It's been pretty dry with the exception of a couple areas over the Bighorn River that you can kind of see in blue. Um, just about north central Wyoming. Um, all of these forecasts are seasonal volumetric forecasts um, over the April through September period, except for in my basin where we do uh, an April through July uh, period just there in the southwest Wyoming. So um, there's still a lot of uncertainty in these forecasts and, and conditions may change, um, but this is how it stands um, um, currently. And next slide. And then here's our flood potential, um, you know, as you might, uh, uh, as it might be intuitive with the lower snowpack amounts, uh, we're not really seeing or expecting uh, flood impacts throughout the state of Wyoming. All of these green dots mean that there's a less than 50% chance uh, through March that any of these will exceed flood stage. Um, it's important to note that river River ice is not accounted for in our uh, river forecast model. So you still might see some impacts should we have any of those kind of ice jam situations. But right now, just you know, mostly due to the, the relatively below normal snowpack amounts throughout much of uh, Wyoming, we're really not expected to see any um, flooding potential. Uh, but again, this is it's still very early in the season. Things could change. Um, don't want to give off any sort of um, false sense of security, but that's about it. Um, if there's any questions, happy to answer them. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. And now we'll go and uh, we'll take another look at the water and climate explorer that I showed here back in the, um, the October webinar. Uh, we'll do a little bit of an emphasis on snow this time. Uh, as I said, this was launched uh, last year during our, our October webinar and uh, there was a subsequent version that was released in December, and just today, or actually late last night, this uh, the newest version was put out and uh, received a number of comments in the months uh, since it was released, the, the original version, and many of them were in the form of, hey, can you add this, or uh, can you put that in there? But a good number have also been, uh, hey, how do you do this, or how do you do that? And having coded the Explorer and using it daily for several months, it's uh, it's easy to forget that a person seeing it for the first time may have a little bit of difficulty using it or knowing where to go or how to how to bring things on. So I'd like to uh, give you a twofer by emphasizing how to view some of the products, uh, but we'll also concentrate on finding the snow ones today since uh, those are at the forefront of most of the questions that I've been getting from around the state. Uh, must emphasize that most of what you're about to see here was put together over the last week. So the charts and maps may not uh, may not, they do not uh, reflect the absolute current conditions, but the uh, the live map online always will. Um, first thing I wanna point out is that there's always this instructions tab up here that you can go to for a quick overview of the, the various icons and the, uh, you know what the, the menu panels mean. But um, 
the instructions were accessed by clicking on that blue tab to, uh, you know, appropriately called instructions. Uh, There's a quick explanation of the icons, and what they mean. Uh, you also see a list of how to videos. Uh, the how to's show a, a brief interaction with the map to give, well, uh, in this example, it was to show how to turn on and off layers. Uh, the basic interaction is still valid, although since these uh, videos were done uh, using an earlier version, some of the layer ordering that you might see in the uh, and on the side there may be different, uh, and there may be a lot more uh, layers that you're seeing, but uh, the actual navigation functionality is, is it's all still valid that you'll see in here. And actually, I did uh, redo the navigation one, and we'll update the others as well as, as time permits. But first of all, let's uh, go to the weather and climate panel, and uh, we do that by clicking on the tab with that name. And when it opens, you'll see a long list of available products, and you can uh, you can display and, and query. You also see a, a number of buttons and icons next to them. And here's a close-up of that panel, so you can see the buttons and the, the icons more clearly. And to the right, here is the key from the, the instructions tab. And you can see that each one of them has a corresponding brief explanation and they correspond with these ones that you'll see here in the in the panel. So now let's go back to our map uh, with the water and climate data panel open. And the first product we'll look at is the basin snowpack map, which is circled in red. So from the instructions, uh, the check box is used to turn the layer on or off. So to view this layer, we just check the box like shown in the upper right there. And when we do that, we get this familiar looking map uh, we saw on one of the earlier slides. Uh, it shows the basin snow water equivalent uh, uh, color coded by percent of median. So uh, you can guess that the colors that green is better than yellow, which is better than orange, which just has to be better than this awful looking purplish color down here in the South Platte. And here's where the legend icon comes in. So now when we click that little set of squares up there to view the legend. Okay, here we go. And on the left side, the legend for that layer you clicked will appear. Um, now we can see that the, the range of colors are associated with. Uh, uh, this is, again, not a current map since I put this uh, portion together earlier, but we know that the orange color is now in the 50 to 75% of normal range. But what if we want to know the exact values? Uh, and that's where this uh, labels icon comes in here, which is, is circled in red on, the, on that enlargement up there in the upper right. If you click that, it will turn a orangish color to indicate that it's active, and then it will show that basin name and what the snow water equivalent percentage is. Now, like I said, these are not the current values. <laughs> uh, since this is updated daily, there's really no reason to demo the refresh button, but uh, if you left the screen up until the next day and then hit the refresh button, well, the map would update to the current display. This is a lot more meaningful on uh, some of the ones that uh, from like the Mesonet, which are pulling data every 10 minutes or something like that. Uh, if you want to get the most recent value, then hit that refresh. Now we have one other button for this layer, and that is the, the one to select uh, a layer to query. So let's click that radio button to activate it. And with the snow water equivalent basin active, we can now click any one of the basins, um, pick up a, uh, let's see here. Oh, that's right, I can I never can click that one. And then, uh, come on, there. If we click inside the, the red rectangle there, we can get a, uh, pop-up of the basins uh, melt updates, uh, projected trends, um, peak values, uh, things like that. So let's just look at that current chart window there. So here we have the graph of snow water equivalent in inches for the Powder River Basin. Uh, very similar to the one I showed you before, except it's a few days older. Blue line is uh, the maximum, the red is the minimum, uh, green is the median, and then gray is last year's trace. Uh, that green dot at about 11 inches just after the middle of April there, that's the median peak and the date of that peak. And unfortunately, the black line shows where we're at this year. Uh, on the date I grabbed that, it was under the minimum. And as you saw, it still is. It's been under there for, for quite a bit of the, of the season. 
the buttons across the top allow us to change the graph. So if we click on the peak snow water equivalent dates, we get a chart showing the peak uh, snow water equivalent for the basin uh, for each year of its history. For the powder, this goes back to uh, 1981. Uh, the median date is shown with the uh, the blue horizontal line and the orange line shows a it's a centered 10 year moving average. Uh, that green dot uh, down in the lower right is where we were when I grabbed this chart. Uh, the next button across the top is peak snow water equivalent values, which gives us uh, a chart very similar to the last one. Uh, but instead of the dates of the peak for each year, this shows the actual values of those peaks. Uh, the green horizontal line, in this case, is the median value, uh, a little over 10 and a half inches. And then the orange one, again, is that 10-year uh, centered moving average. Uh, circled in green down on the lower right is where we are now. Uh, so going to the next button, uh, we get the melt-out dates, which is similar to the peak snow water equivalent dates. But instead, this shows the date uh, that each basin was considered to be melted out. Uh, like on the previous chart, the uh, horizontal green line is the median meltout date. Uh, the orange one is the 10 year moving average. And that's about all for this. One more button allows us to play a little bit of a what if situation, uh, identical to the first graph that I showed you there, except uh, you can see some projections from where that black line ends, uh, pointed to by that black arrow. Uh, so extending from that point are dotted blue, green, and red lines. Um, if you follow the green line, this is how snowpack would trend if we received uh, normal snowpack from now to the end of the season. Uh, unfortunately, it still doesn't really get us much above the minimum. Uh, likewise, the, the blue dotted line and the red dotted line show what would happen if we got maximum and minimum historical snowfall. So let's go back to the map. And for effect, I'm gonna go down to base layers and then we'll open that tab and select the hill shades so we can get the uh, the terrain behind the map and this looks more and more like the the one I showed on the previous slides um, we'll keep this on for the rest of the products so we can we can get a little bit of relief back there so with that uh, we've gone through you should get a pretty good idea of navigating uh, turning layers on viewing legends uh, querying points so now I'm going to just show you a few of the other snow products that we have out there, starting with the one I showed earlier. No, I didn't show this one, did I? No, this is the remotely sent snow water equivalent, not the, uh, the one I showed before was the uh, percent. This is the actual values uh, showing the distribution across the state of the actual snow water equivalent in inches. Uh, you can see it circled in red in the layer list there on the on the lower right, and you can see I've clicked that checkbox to turn it on. Just a little bit more navigation hint there. Uh, one last feature to point out in uh, the menu is that one on the far right with a blue line and a and a gray circle that allows you to make the letter more or less transparent, and that comes in handy when you have the the terrain on like we do uh, do here. So if you slide it all the way to the left layer just completely disappears it's completely transparent and if you slide it all the way to the right the letter becomes uh the layer becomes 100 percent opaque and gets a little bright to look at sometimes somewhere around the 50 to the 60 percent level is usually a good compromise uh, like i say especially if you're putting it on terrain or you want to see some of the features underneath uh, it's kind of a way of just and instead of toggling it on and off you can sort of slide it off and on to see what uh is uh, sitting underneath it. This layer also has a query feature. Uh, it's got that radio button to the left of it. And clicking that allows you to pick any spot on the map and get the exact value of modeled snow water equivalent for that grid cell. So I'm going to select, or I did select, a spot inside that uh, red rectangle in the Tetons. And when I do, get a little pop-up box uh, that shows a snow water equivalent in inches, uh, circled up there in green. And I'll just show a few slides of some layers turned on and off and, and highlight the layer in that, um, that menu there. So we can look at a one day change in snow water equivalent. So this is how much the snow water equivalent went up or down from yesterday. 
And next one is the same, but we're just comparing this day to two days ago. Sort of like we do during the webinar where we show, okay, this was a week ago or two weeks ago. Uh, sometimes you want to see the effect of a, a storm that's come through. So, okay, what, what happened? How is our snow water equivalent now compared to what it was yesterday or two days ago? And as time permits, may I add a few other uh, different date factors in there, like a week or two weeks. Uh, here we see what the median or the normal snow water equivalent looks like across the state. Uh, um, again, this is for the date that I retrieved these. Uh, do you remember what it looked like for that date last year? You well, know, you can turn these on and off and try to get a, an idea of uh, what the difference is, what's what has snow now, what doesn't have snow, what did then, what does now. Or you can select that departure from median layer, and I've gone ahead and already done the comparison. Uh, eastern side of the wind, uh, a few other areas are in green and purple, which is a positive departure from the median. Uh, in other words, it's things are doing better than the median or normal, but much of the, the areas where there is snow are in yellow or red, which is uh, a negative departure, or it's on the, uh, the worst side of the median. Let's see, two more snow features to show. And the first of these is exactly like the snow water equivalent ones we've seen before, except that this one shows the snow depth, uh, not, the, not the water content, but the actual uh, amount of snow itself on the ground. And again, this is uh, remotely sensed and modeled snow depth across the state. And this comes from the uh, snow data assimilation system, which is from the uh, get this right, the National Operational Hydrologic Remote Sensing Center. And oh, look at one more uh, navigation feature in the Explorer, and that is the ability to, uh, to zoom to a specific county. Since we're uh, looking at the Powder River Basin before, let's zoom to Johnson County. Uh, scroll that uh, map controls back up and then look at the uh, zoom to location tab. And uh, from there, you can select either USA or city or or not city, but states or uh, any of the Wyoming counties. And here I have circled uh, Johnson County. So when you click on the county name, it zooms into uh, to Johnson County. And from this point, let's turn on two layers. One is the aerial image, which is in the base maps. And then the second one is, we'll turn on the individual uh, snow tell sites and we get this total map. I uh, also turned on the legend over here so you can see what the different colors are for the, um, for the, for the stations. And then to show the snow water equivalent in inches as well as the percent of median, we can turn on the labels. And we also see the snow depth and temperature at the time. And this, this is one of those ones where the refresh comes in handy because this updates every hour. Uh, the way it is coded now, if you just leave the, the the screen up, it will update the screen for you. But if something gets stuck or internet goes goes wonky or something like that, you can hit the refresh to make sure you get the uh, the latest version. Uh, and at this point, you could activate the snow tell sites layer for querying and select one to retrieve its data. But uh, in the in the interest of time, I won't go into a, into that here. So this is really just kind of scratching the surface of, of the features that can be displayed in the, in the Explorer and some of the things that you can do. And I invite you to, to, um, to go ahead and try it out on your own when you have the time. And if you run into questions on oh, how you do this or that, or, or if there's features that you'd like to see in there, uh, either layers or things that you'd like to be able to do with them or, or things like that, uh, just, uh, Comments in general, send me an email. My uh, address is under the instructions part of the Explorer. And it's also on the closing slide, which is here. And so now I'll pass it back to Wendy Kelly with uh, the USDA Northern Plains Climate Hub and University of Wyoming Extension. And she'll take us into Q&A. Great, thank you, Tony. And thanks to all of our presenters as well as our attendees and again, the presenters' names, their office, and who they're affiliated with, as well as their emails, are on the screen. I also want to just draw your attention to how to get involved. It's been a while since we've shared this. So under my name, you can see Get Involved. And there's a little QR code there next to Submit a Condition Monitoring Observer Report. 
So if you hold your smart device up to your screen with the camera on, you can tap your device um, on that kind of QR code and open up the direct link to be able to submit a condition monitoring observer report, which we encourage folks to do to let us know when conditions uh, are you know, more wet to too dry and anything in between. And you can also submit photos to help tell the story, uh, comparison photos of a, a more, you know, a good year versus a not so good year are really helpful so we can become familiar with those areas. And also just uh, to highlight the Coco Raws uh, program of becoming a volunteer where you get a standard four inch rain gauge that you set up at a location such as your, you know, near your house, and then you report uh, ideally on a daily basis any precipitation you receive or do not receive. So those zeros are just as important, if not more important, than the precipitation you do receive. So I wanted to highlight those. Uh, so before we go into Q and A, I'm going to invite my colleague Avery to stop the recording.